everyone. Can uh, we all please rise for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President Hammond? Here. Vice President Daly? Here. Trustee Parr? Here. Trustee Headland? Here. And Trustee Clements is absent. Okay, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to this evening's meeting. I'm going to start with uh, some comments regarding uh, the New York State <laughs> School Boards Association Annual Convention. Jen, myself, Dr. Penante, and Peggy had the opportunity to attend this year's event in Manhattan. Uh, it was their 99th year. It was exciting. It was a good opportunity for us board members and Dr. Bernante to co-mingle with schools as far north as Syracuse um, to Long Island. And we had opportunity to continue to learn um, as a school board member, as superintendents. They had a variety of different programs uh, throughout the three days. Um, would you like to add any? Would you, you go to? I went to opioids. Um, we had the opportunity to hear Commissioner uh, Aaliyah speak. We also had the opportunity um, to hear John Quinones uh, from ABC. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, the What Would he, You Do? The What Would You Do? Mm -hmm. Ethics and the School Systems. And oh, okay. Uh, what else did we do? Well, I went to the um, school law seminar, which because there's nothing better <laughs> is is a full day of excitement. But it's it's it was on the Thursday from eight till four, and it was um, one uh, kind of legal issue after another um, and discussion of. Uh, really pertinent stuff like the new sexual harassment yep. um, law, the new um, blanking on the name right now, but the new uh, union, what's that one called? Janus case. Janus. The Janus case, the new Janus case, uh, security stuff. Um, Interesting. So they, I think maybe it was five different like uh, topics and they just spent the day going over them and how it pertained to us, the changes, things like that. So that was really interesting. I mean, it was, um, you know, it was, it was a commitment of a day, but it was it was interesting stuff and really all really relevant. Um, and then um, I also got a chance to go to some mental uh, mental health in the public schools, which was really interesting. It was highlighting um, a school district in Hoosick Falls, which is um, outside of the Albany area, and this school has just like completely shifted to like all mental health services all the time. I mean, they have pet therapy dogs in the schools, art therapists on staff, equine therapy. I mean, it's, and this is like a rural, mm -hmm. semi-lower income yeah. uh, school district. So, I mean, that they really showed, you know, where it can go. Um, and so that was really interesting and, and inspiring for sure. Um, and then I saw, uh, what else? Oh, I went to a workshop on e-STEAM and which at first I thought was kind of like, oh, how many letters, you know, can they get in this acronym? Like, what is it going to become? Um, but E-STEAM is now empathy with science, technology, et cetera, et cetera. The idea being, at, at first I was a little skeptical, but the idea is putting a why behind what we're doing. And that actually was really, really interesting. And it was run by um, the Yorktown Heights uh, School District. Uh, and superintendent and that was um, I thought I found that to be really interesting to see you know I feel like sometimes we talk about these two different tracks like some people are all about like technology robotics coding and then some people are all about like you know mental health and music and whatever and, and it seems like they're two diverging tracks and this East steam idea was finding a way I felt like to bridge them mm -hmm. so um, I found that interesting I also went to um, a seminar about childhood sexual abuse mm -hmm. and preventing it in the schools and there were some uh, you know those numbers are just startling and sobering um, so we talked about that 
And um, I went to something about communication, which was interesting because it was a superintendent and a board president same. of the same school same district uh, talking about their process with communication. Hmm which I thought was really interesting given uh, especially what you know we've experienced as of late um, and I was so impressed by their honesty you know I feel like sometimes we, we try to kind of keep those issues under the rug and try to not you know not talk about them or not let the public know we're talking about them and um, they they just talked about their process where the, the board president was like yeah so and so was you know, he'd send out this email, and this email said X, Y, and Z, and nobody knew what he was talking about. And the, and the superintendent was like, yeah, well, this was why I sent it out, and this is what I thought. And, you know, and they were just very honestly talking about their communication issues. Um, and so I really appreciated their mm -hmm. Was there a candor. handout with that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they Everyone really, they had, they had somebody kind of come in mm -hmm. and help them work through it. But what I was really struck by was everybody seemed... Uh, willing to work through it right. and I really saw that as the key right. that the superintendent was receiving this feedback and was like okay uh, I, I, I want to get better at this so let's really talk about how I can get better at this mm -hmm. and was really using it as like a problem-solving mm -hmm. opportunity instead of like a, a criticism that couldn't be dealt right. with um, so it was really interesting I feel like we all had um, also some time to spend some time together which is really nice you know team building yeah. um, I also attended a few of the social emotional workshops um, one which I found very interesting was um, peer groups mm -hmm. acting as um, liaisons with social workers um, I actually passed along the handout and if anybody else is interested I can pass it on to Dr. Sure. Nante, yeah, but, it's something that we, I think, couldn't act here. And actually, at one point, we were almost at that point where everybody had a dot, if you remember, yes. connected to another individual. Um, and then that system kind of just went away. Um, but really, this is all student driven um, with the help of their social worker. This was presented by a school in Long Island, Hop Hog, Long Island. They've been doing it for 21 years, and they found this to okay. be very successful. So maybe it's something that yeah, yeah. And I think rebuild. that's what kind of comes out of these conferences is that these little you get these little moments right. of inspiration or moments of like oh well maybe How we could that or and yeah and yeah. you know they just get you thinking a little bit differently, yeah. which is so great. And um, something I noticed, so I went to this conference, they have them annually, and I went to this conference six years ago when I was first on the board, and maybe I wasn't looking for it as much as I am now, but the programming has shifted, in my opinion, really dramatically towards more mental health oh, really? uh, seminars. I mean, every day of the conference, there was multiple ones to choose from, whether it was mental health or drug use or... Um, and I, I thought that was a really striking shift, and I found it to be really uh, positive, that yeah. at least the right conversations, in my opinion, the right conversations are happening uh, at leadership levels in education. So I, I found that to be really... Um, Awareness and recognition of that as a component yeah. of a child's education. Yeah. Or something the school needs to deal with. That's right. And so for me, that was a shift, unless I wasn't paying attention along the years. And this year, I was just really paying attention to it, but I think it's been a yeah. shift. That's great. Yeah. If there really were handouts, I really would. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I was that wasn't a slight for any of us. That was like you know communications is a big thing on our mm -hmm. on our goals this mm -hmm. year. Let's let's use it. Let's yeah, look well, at it. Yeah. All and of see. the um, all of the seminars that were presented and all of the handouts for every seminar is on Nisba's. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, website. All right. Is that correct? They, yes. Yeah. But I'm not sure if everybody had access or just the I attendees. I think so. Is it? I well. I'll take a look. Take a look, um, but if not, we can uh, yeah. forward you know forward it over if you for some reason don't have access. All right, because it does um, sound like there's lots of good stuff. There, there was that lots we could of great use. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? 
Peggy actually attended the business meeting portion. I mm. had in yeah. she, was uh, there. she was voting. She was voting yeah. for us. Uh, she was representing us. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to follow up with her. No, but me neither. I'm sure. But well, we got well. email saying, like, these are the NISBAs mm-hmm. voting right. Right. Yep. results or whatever they call it. Well, Peggy was a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Raising her hand, cele- you know, yes. voting for us. All right. Just a reminder that the next business meeting will be held on Monday, November 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, it's a Monday due to the Thanksgiving break. Um, we're holding it Monday instead of Tuesday. Okay, so with that said, Dr. Benante. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Uh, I echo your thoughts as well as Ms. Daly's regarding the NISBA convention. It's great to spend some time together. And uh, I think one of the, some of the best workshops and sessions are those where you're, you're sitting in what other districts are doing or how they're approaching the very issues that you're approaching as well. And um, it's good to form relationships and connections with other um, school administrators and school board members who are having um, often the very same conversations that we are. And um, it's a good reminder of that. And if I had the figure correct, I think there were over 2,000 attendees this year which is pretty incredible when you think about that Um, additionally Jen and I had the chance to go down to uh, Westchester last night for the uh, lower Hudson Council um, dinner um, board superintendent dinner so we had the chance to sit with some friends from uh, Putt Valley and also from Brewster if I'm not mistaken Uh, we were at a table together so it looks like they tried to keep the Putnam folks together (laughs) uh, which was great Uh, but again had some uh, great conversation and we had uh, listened to John Morrow who was giving the speech who uh, worked for PBS if I'm not mistaken has a couple books that he's authored Um, he was an education reporter um, and I enjoyed our time there as well so it's always good time time spent with our board and our superintendent is good time uh, spent so i appreciate that Uh, just a few announcements uh, for me Uh, one our uh, spo uh, started and i'm pleased to report that Uh, we were notified by the putnam county sheriff's office that they had an spo ready for us uh, and he was ready like right away so uh, they notified us and he was ready to start within a day or two so john segnant started with us i believe last week or the week before Uh, we have we've had an extra week between meetings so my timing may be a little off Uh, but John brings a wealth of experience to our school system he is a retired uh, Department of Corrections officer in Putnam County and he was previously in the Mayapak school system Uh, so he has experience being in a school setting and uh, he has at least uh, his word said he absolutely loves Haldane and loves being here it certainly looks like he's enjoying his time here Uh, Deputy Shelters has been a good assistant uh, to him uh, or of good assistance to him uh, escorting him around uh, campus and familiarizing him with the facilities and our routines and our procedures and overall uh, I'd say he's off to a great start uh, realizing that we have a new a few new folks on board uh, John obviously um, uh, Nabil Botros, our director of facilities, and we're anticipating a new director of PPS in the coming weeks. I reached out to the PTA, and we're going to uh, the PTA is going to assist in sponsoring uh, meet and greet uh, with the new uh, members of our school community, especially those who are at a, more of an administrative level. Uh, and we're looking to do so next month, um, ideally. So we have the director of PPS uh, in place, or at least named um, and approved by the board by that point, and we'll look to do it uh, prior or t- after a PTA meeting, uh, so folks in the community can come out and meet uh, some of the individuals who are on campus and uh, get to know them a little bit better, and also uh, perhaps stay for our PTA meeting, which would be nice as well. So uh, we look forward to that next month. <coughs> and just a quick question on Go the ahead. SPO: What's the um, d- it was explained at one point. I've totally sure. deleted it from my <laughs> head. Um, what is? What are the hours for? How does the scheduling work? I'm for actually you? glad you, you brought that up. Uh, I made a note here to speak to that. I did not. Uh, his hours are ten to five. Okay. Um, All right. So he has this sort of later. Yes. So he's on. Um, swing shift whatever yep. that may be uh, but it is a it's a seven hour day yeah and I talked to the um, uh, county uh, about this and this isn't anything that John directly has control over it's the work agreement or the contract between our district and the county those hours are, are not flexible so if we have uh, a time where we want to shift him to 12 to 7 or whatnot that's not how that works so, um, so we need to be wary of that and uh-huh. we have to plan accordingly and that's why partly I'm glad we kept uh, a good relationship with U.S. Uh, Security Associates because we may have times where we want to bring someone in for 
a couple of hours because we have evening events going on, yeah. whatever it may be, and we still have the ability to, to utilize them okay. as well. Uh, but his hours are, are um, 10 to 5, and, okay. and that's that. Um, so that's just something we should be aware of and uh, consider if we find that there is something uh, in the evening that we so, want to So how does it work when there's a, a game, a basketball game, a volleyball game, that's not covered? Well, we can choose to uh, bring someone in to cover it. Uh, we cannot flex him uh, we can't during flex that time. him. No. And, uh, or we cannot cover some games, some events, we may just have a police officer on campus right. for. We do that with some sporting events. If we expect a large crowd, that generally is uh, right. just a, a good practice. Uh, but we may find that it's a, an event that we normally would not have um, a sheriff uh, on, on campus for. Uh, so in those situations, we may feel we don't need one, and we can have the door open and just have people coming in and out to a basketball game. Uh, or we may feel like we may want to bring in a greeter um, or access the greeter services through U.S. security and uh, have them come in uh, to monitor access during those times yeah, well we have chaperones at every game we do um so that's something yeah. to note and also i think uh, when we were discussing the spo last year we thought that it'd be good that he be here during the lunch hours right um so that was the other um reason yeah. why mm -hmm. the 10 o'clock start right um, but we still have but, an issue but that there's a door down there is after oh. five most of the elementary uh, programs are gone. Correct. Right. Um, we do have chaperones at every game. So it's something I, I hear what you're saying. Right. But it's. Yeah. So would the practice be that after five o'clock, that door in toward uh, the, the cafeteria door is just unlocked? Well, we have an option there. Either we lock it and it's locked, the building's closed, and someone, whoever is on the inside of the building, the building's closed essentially I wouldn't even say someone who's in the building has to allow access to someone's in we're just saying the building's closed or it's unlocked because there's an event going on and we're allowing people to come in and out of the building because of that event and you know they're accessing the gymnasium or they're accessing another part of the building um, or there could be an event going on upstairs let's say uh, a parent event a back to school night um, where the front door is open and it's fine people are coming in and out of the building I think the question and the standard we have to kind of sort out is what is the kind of expectation for when we will have someone right. monitoring who's coming in and out of the building. Generally, I would say, and I'm not saying uh, I can, uh, my mind can be changed, but when we have a back to school event like we had in September where parents are coming in to meet their child's teacher, the front door should be open. We wouldn't expect people to be going through a sign in process. I think it's an understanding that the building is not secure. Uh, during that time. We have adults coming in. Uh, they're coming for an event between the adults in the building, and they're not going through um, the sign-in process. Um, for a sporting event, I, I would say, again, that the, I would think the reasonable assumption is the building is not secure during those times. We're not right. seeking to monitor who's coming in and out like we would do during regular sport, uh, school hours. No different than if there were a football game uh, down right. at the field that <laughs> people would be coming in and out, and we're not we're not signing them in and out. So right. um, a basketball game, I think, would be would follow a similar logic um, in that uh, that it's understood that you're coming into the building. Um, certainly, we're going to have certain points of the building closed down where we would say you're not supposed to be upstairs, wandering the hallways. Uh, your activity should be limited to the athletic corridor if you're here for a basketball game, um, but that we wouldn't have someone necessarily going in through a sign-in process. If we have two events going on, where we have a basketball game going on and maybe we have a student event going on upstairs. I don't know uh, our calendar that well yet because right. uh, I haven't lived it, but if uh, we have a situation like that going on, I would lean towards having someone who would remain at the end of the hallway just to make sure that right. the individuals who are going upstairs are here for legitimate business uh, and the individuals who are here for the athletic event are obviously making their way into the auditorium. And what about aftercare? Those kids are I here until 6, right? Oh, is it 6? Uh, I'm not... Um, my initial impression is that the aftercare program has a responsibility to um, pair kids with families at the right, conclusion of the program. Right, but family has to come into the building, so if we lock that door down there, where do they come in? Uh, I don't know if they have to come into the building. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. There's no reason why an aftercare program couldn't walk them out of the building once the program concluded. But they all leave at different times. I, I'd have to, I don't know how, right? we, I'd have Th to they do. look into I'm that. I'm sure they do. But I don't know, the aftercare program is not run by us. No, it's right? through the rec department. So 
I, I do think a question we have to ask, and I've just lived this uh, in previous work, whose responsibility is it to monitor the door for an outside organization's right. use of our facilities, even though it's our kids and we feel that connection to them, does that become our responsibility right. uh, to monitor that um, and, and to pay for that? Um, right. I think we have to be wary of that. Right. Um, and manage it. You know, whose responsibility is it to manage that? Um, and set the, set the expectations with the outside. This, if you're yeah. going to be using our These facilities, are the here's for the using expectations. It. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's a route we may, we should go down. Right. <laughs> or take. Are they, where are they meeting this year? Do you, do you know? Are they down here? In the, the maker upstairs? space. In the maker space, which means somebody's, the parents have got to come in. It's not like we can let the kids. They're in the library. They're in the library. Are they? Because we needed the maker space for after school. Well, they, we couldn't keep moving them because they have to get. Um, yeah, there's some clearance. There's security and clearances they have to get, they have to get so they have to get a space. certain space assigned to them. Yeah. And because we need the maker space for classroom space this year, um, they're in the elementary library. Okay. They're in the elementary library. So, yeah. I well, once it gets figured out, <laughs> could we, we might want to have Which some sort of like schedule uh, that we could post on the door. You know what I mean? Because right. it is a little confusing if you walk to the door and the door is locked and you're coming in. So like tonight, 530, 6 o'clock, you're coming in to see the rest of your girls' basketball practice and the door is locked. You know, it would be nice to have a note there saying the building is locked after 5 p.m. if that's what's decided I think and I think it's just communication so we all got the communication from the PTA regarding an upcoming meeting uh, and they did note to please use this right. tour right because the others will be locked so I think we just have to keep the communication right, but it's and not it's not always it's like that like today there was the book fair after school uh, and you could go in the front door okay right because they were trying to make it welcoming so you can mm -hmm. just go in the front door right. but the understanding i thought was after 3 15 you got to go in through the cafeteria door right. but you know it's a book fair and so right the principals are and they were there to greet you you know, okay. Miss Silky was there. Dr. Silky was there, like to greet people and to show them where to go, and which I thought was, you know, nice and appropriate, actually. But I, I didn't know that that was where we were supposed to go. You know what I mean? Right. So there's yeah. just we just got to figure out we're what the consistency is, for. figure out what the rule is, and then maybe stick with it or something. Right. Consistency will matter. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Uh, our friends from PNW BOCES who facilitated our winter retreat also inquired, I'm sorry, our summer retreat, inquired as to if the board would like to engage in a winter retreat, which there was a brief discussion about that when we met this summer. Uh, so um, I told uh, Ms. Mr. McCarthy and uh, Dr. Allen uh, that I would check in with the board to see if that's something that we're interested in. Uh, their schedules book pretty quickly uh, so they're often booking a month in advance so uh, Lynn and John were great they checked in again with me I said, a couple weeks between <laughs> meetings here we have an extra week I'll I'll be sure to get back to you after Tuesday night um, if that's something the board is interested in uh, I would say we would probably best be served um, looking at a three to four hour commitment um, and I can have um, someone from our office uh, reach out to you just to get a sense for what your schedule is through January, early February, and seek to identify a few times that work for the group, uh, and then to um, ask you to hold a, a date or two, if, if that's something the board's interested in. I, I think it's yeah. in our best interest. Uh, okay. We had the two part in our minds anyway. Um, and what I had mentioned to Dr. Benante is that we probably want to do this before we get into the thick of budget season. So January or February um, is probably. When's, when's the mid-year district goal progress workshop? <laughs> uh, it's right it's around that time. Okay. I think it's the second meeting. It's the second it's meeting in January. Second meeting in January. It doesn't stand oh. off to me, but that would be probably the third Tuesday in January. Okay. All right. 
So I, I think it lines up well. Yeah. Um, superintendent mid-year valuation usually is around that time as okay. well. So there's a few things going on. I think it'd be a good time to check in about communication, uh, processes and procedures up to that point since we spent time mm -hmm. talking about it uh, this summer. Uh, I think there'll be some more actions that will be taken by then. It'd be good to talk through and process that, and get your feedback. And, so if you can have Linda maybe coordinate with um, Dr. Allen and Mr. McCarthy some dates and then yep. share the dates with us yep. and we'll get yeah, back yeah. with uh, Great. So keep an eye on your email because uh, yep. I imagine that's how Linda will reach out. Uh, just two more items. Uh, one, uh, Julie Sniffen spoke to it uh, during her last report, but the flyer did go out for our next Friends and Family University, which will be uh, November 14th, so next week. Uh, here at, in the auditorium from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we have Courtney Lovell and Tom O'Brien here, uh, both with um, uh, an expertise, uh, if you will, in the field of substance abuse. Uh, Courtney Lovell on a, on a personal experience, and Tom O'Brien is the superintendent of Roxbury Schools. Uh, so he'll, uh, he served as, serves as the public school representative on the New York State Drug Tax Task Force. Uh, so both of them will be speaking, and then there's a couple of breakout sessions for parents where we'll have the option uh, to attend uh, um, a breakout session on um, the rise in teen vaping. Um, or uh, a hidden mischief uh, program, which is um, you know, things to look for in the home uh, that may um, be indicators of uh, substance uh, abuse. So um, it's a good program. Uh, we're uh, fortunate to have the individuals who we have coming in. And again, that'll be November 14th from 6 to 8, and that went out um, to our district parents uh, last week, I believe. Can I ask a question on that, too? On the flyer, the Cove Care Center and the Prevention Council of Putnam are sponsoring that. Are they going to have tables with information there, too? I don't know if they'll have tables set up. So I had the opportunity to attend last year, and Cove Care sponsored the Hidden Mischiefs. It was very interesting. And in addition, they had... Um, tables and information. So I would assume it's going to be a similar. Mm -hmm. I was there last year, but I didn't uh, see tables. Yeah, upstairs. We they were kind of spread out. The they were in the one. library down here. I'm not sure of the setup, but um. <laughs> I saw Courtney speak uh, last year at the NISBA conference, mm -hmm. um, and she. I mean, the, she, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Uh, she's very compelling, and she tells a really. Um, heartbreaking but also very hopeful right. story so um, we're lucky to have her and we are. Uh, lastly I just had one yeah. add on uh, Ms. Hammond uh, I want to just send a congratulations out to our fall sports teams uh, we've had tremendous success uh, that keeps on rolling um, last weekend last Saturday I had the pleasure <laughs> of sharing 200 miles in the car <laughs> with Miss Sniffin. <laughs> we are like this. We're besties now. Did you have a uh, mixtape? There was no mixtape. <laughs> there were some poor choices in music. Uh, 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 but we went to, we started at Bowden Park to watch our cross country, cross country teams compete, both the boys and the girls. Uh, the boys are sectional champions. Uh, the girls don't actually have, while placing first, second, third, and fifth, don't have enough runners to qualify as a team oh, really? uh, for the sectional championship, although yeah, I'm pretty sure we would have won it if we did. <laughs> so great success there. Uh, we made our way up to or over to Mayapak High School to watch our football team uh, compete in the sectional final. Uh, they won against Tuckahoe in a great game. So the boys are going on to the state competition and uh, they play next Friday. Um, our, we then made our way down to Pace University uh, to watch our volleyball team play tough loss uh, the girls uh, volleyball team to a very tough Valhalla team uh, but they played well they had a great season um, so their season concluded and then we made our way to the school foundation event uh, back up in Cold Spring so um, a great day though uh, for Haldane and in the background uh, out in Connecticut our model UN team group was competing and Andrew, it's my understanding that you actually were recognized um, as, and I don't, I don't have the actual name of the recognition. It was for your delegation. Uh, can you speak to it? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Haldane went to University of Connecticut. Is this on? Sorry. 
<laughs> we went to uh, university, uh, university of Connecticut's 20th anniversary of their Model UN conference. Uh, after having about half of our team pull out because of sectionals, unfortunately, <laughs> we had to find a lot of people last minute. Uh, so we weren't too sure about the status of the trip until about two or three days before, but it ended up being a huge success. Everyone loved it. And of the 16 councils, we had two winners. Uh, Katrina Fia Sr. won uh, Best Delegate for Israel mm -hmm. on the Counterterrorism Council, and then I won uh, Best Delegate as India on the Refugee Council. So very successful weekend, and we're hoping to go back next year. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. Uh, while we're Good watching job. the volleyball game, we're getting texts from Mr. Sniffin about how our kids are doing at Model UN. So it was really outstanding. A great representation of our accomplishments on the uh, athletic field and in the classroom as well. So congratulations, Andrew. We're very proud. Thank you. Uh, and that concludes my remarks. Great. Thank you. So all good stuff. Um, looking forward to the next competitions. Moving on to committee minutes. There, the health and safety from the October 15th meeting and the buildings and grounds from the October 22nd meeting. They're there for our viewing. Did our safety committee name get changed to health and safety committee? It's always we had been referring to it as the safety committee, <laughs> but when I looked back on the charge, it says health and safety committee. So I started to revert like back health to safety health and safety ba committee. Better, actually. I think, I think it's more comprehensive. It always was. I think part of what has occurred is there's been so many discussions <laughs> and the focus of the committee has been on safety that the health and part got dropped off. But the charge from is the board health and is health and safety. Yes. The minutes are labeled <laughs> safety, safety. Ah. so we need i think we need got it if in it's fact we process. need to yeah, yeah. but I, I like health and safety better it's the health and safety committee okay the thank you has designated okay thank you and i remember attending those committees back in the day as health and safety mm -hmm. so okay yeah, yeah. good any, any buildings and grounds mm -hmm. um after um how do you say his name? Nobio. Nobio started. We were going to set up a time for the board to do the walkthrough since we didn't do it at the beginning of the oh, year. Yeah. That's yeah. still on on track to happen sure. at some point. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you for reminding me. I'm happy to have Linda coordinate a time where she can uh, work with your schedules. Uh, Nabil's here, so I'm sure he'll be very accommodating of that and find a time where the majority, at least the majority of board That'd members, can attend uh, yeah. for a walkthrough. We've often done it uh, pre-board pre meeting, sure. maybe like pre-workshop yeah. meeting where he's scheduled to be here uh, for a, a workshop meeting anyway. Uh, just would next meeting be too soon or? I think that's up to him. That's a Monday. I mean, that's Monday the 20, the 19th. Okay. That'll be fine. Okay. I'll, I'll check with him and then we'll confirm. Yeah. Thank you. And I think it'd be good maybe and can fill him in as to what we've done in the past on the walkthroughs sure. just so we have okay any communication from the public this time no nothing okay Moving on to uh, information reports. These are the uh, financial reports for us to view and we will um, prove at the next meeting. <coughs> Correspondence from Ms. Danielle Pack McCarthy, who has, um, who is very willing to work with Haldane and as she has um, become the coordinator, I don't know her exact title for Phillipstown. <laughs> Prevention, prevention education. AC something, addiction. Uh, and you know I what, my um, yeah, my it's that not opening up here. Otherwise, I I know it was at the bottom. Yeah. Your title was at the bottom, but we're yeah, very thankful. Uh, addiction resource coordinator. Addiction resource Arc, coordinator. That's right. Arc. Um, she's the addiction resource coordinator for the town of Phillipstown, and Danielle has graciously um, always you know, lend a helping hand here at Haldane, willing to continue to work with us, and we're very grateful. Um, so at one point, I think uh, towards the end of our workshop meetings, we were planning on having Danielle come in uh, and speak as part of the, um, mm -hmm. I 
can't think of the topic now, but it's one of the last ones. I know that. Social emotional. Social oh, emotional. Social emotional yeah. right. mm -hmm. Given the content of the Friends and Family University, is she engaged or her, the town engaged in I'm, some way, shape, or form? I'm not sure, but I know she was there last year. Yes. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm sure she's aware. I'm but sure I can obviously aware. reach out to her as well okay. um, and just let her know what's happening. Yep. Moving on to consent agenda minutes. These are the minutes from the October 16th meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda financial. These are the reports primarily from um, prior meeting as well as the approval to declare two school bus vans and the approval for the um, peace officer, special patrol officer agreement. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion or comments? Just a quick sure. note on the uh, SPO agreement. Uh, so I had signed the agreement for the SPO this summer um, however, the board should act on the agreement to ratify my signature on there. So it should have come before the board. And upon reflection, as John started, I, don't, I didn't recall, I recalled the um, school resource officer contract being uh, acted upon by the board, but not the SPO contract. And um, so that's what, why it's on here tonight, um, as opposed to uh, two months ago. Okay. Um, so um, it's, uh, I signed it, the agreement, is um, legitimate between us and the county, but the board should be rat should ratify my signature given that I went ahead and signed the document. And just as a contra uh, contractual question, um, so this once ratified, this will be available through board docs. Uh, okay, fine, great, yep. good. And great and we good. can put it on the website. Yeah, no, I don't. But know, uh, but back to the, the conversation <laughs> that we had, which is it's there. It's just it's easier to get right. to versus harder to get. But it's right. definitely there to begin with. Okay. Fine. Right. Um, was I totally crazy to think that SPO stood for School Peace Officer? I thought that's so in all of our documents <laughs> last year that I see, we were it said peace officer. Officer. we were we were referring to it as such. However, in our agreement, and if you were actually look at his badge, um, it's a Special Patrol Officer is the actual title. So we were incorrectly referring to it, or is that like? <laughs> but that's I not think just the us. Terms are used synonymously, quite frankly, um, based on the other districts who use SPOs. Right. They are often referring to them as school peace officers. Okay, thank you. So However, so okay. Putnam so County, off guard right he, now? By, in the contract, he is a special patrol officer. Because okay. I exactly. know we spoke as peace officer, and I'm looking mm -hmm. at the contract, and it's saying patrol officer, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, all right. Yeah. So does okay. okay. I just wanted to Very match good. with just what the contract check. says. Right. The contract says patrol. But it's, it's not just us. His Other badge school says patrol officer, and his <laughs> card says special patrol <laughs> officer. So I wrote peace officer too. So I'm okay. Really glad. There we, go. <laughs> right. we can just go with SPO, and we're SPO. all good. <laughs> Whatever you want to call. It. All right. All right. So may I have a motion? You say tomato. I think we. Oh, did we? Sorry, so we had conversation. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda personnel, may I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion or comments? Can we just talk about number one? It's um, the increase from 0 0.75 to 1.0. This was the position that we talked about last year during budget season, right? This was one of our cuts to balance things out. We felt like we didn't need the full-time uh, teaching assistant position. We could decrease to 0.75. Uh, however, now we realize we need, we do need that 1.0 position, and so we're reinstating it. Is that all correct? I don't know uh, the history of last year with respect to the position. It's my understanding we had a 0.75 to fill However, based on increased student need, uh, we now need essentially the services of a, a full-time employee. Oh, so this isn't not this is You're not both then correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looking to Anne, yes. just because there's is, some history there. This is during budget development. 
we reduced um, a teaching yeah. assistant by 0.25 oh, okay. and now because of student enrollment we need that 0.25 back very good okay. and the budget can support it what's yes. the what's the what role is the assistant playing uh, this assistant is at the high school um, if I remember correctly there um, is it in the recommendation, it's in the, uh, recommendation okay. right. if I'll you open it. up the uh, I'll find it. Sorry. yes it's for additional support for E&L students okay. so we didn't have money for it in the budget but we do have money in the budget yes because there were other items that we budgeted for that we haven't started yet so it's a flex. So we're going to be down 0.25 in the long term. So as an example, we went a couple of months without a director of facilities. Right. There. That was budgeted for, but we were not paying anyone for those services. Right. So that, that happens uh, somewhat fluidly throughout the school year. Yeah. And just as an example, I don't mean to interject. Um, so when we have a, a need like this, which is at a much lower salary than what we would have paid a director of facilities, it allows us to accommodate that. And there's other positions similarly, not just director yeah. facilities that have not been filled or weren't filled right away or there was a lapse that um, allow us to have some flexibility with uh, as needs come up through the school year. Right. Just I just wanted to be clear because that was a contentious but thing in when we were discussing budgets where we but were actually out little bits and pieces if we remember when we discussed special ed uh, we always said that item is right. very difficult to pinpoint and that the needs shift dramatically hmm. um, based, on based on it could be you know whatever right. the needs are and that we had to keep that fluid that number was a right. fluid number um, so and I'm sorry, I lied and right over. I acted like I knew what the acronym stands for. What does ENL stand for? English is a new language. A new language. Okay, fantastic. Formerly ESL. I know. I was like, I know right. ESL. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so that's the story with it. Right. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 New business. Okay. These are the CSE CPSC recommendations. The recommended action is be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendations of the Committee on Special Education, Committee on Preschool Special Education, and Section 504 Committee as presented. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion or comments? Yeah, can I ask a question? Just being somewhat new to this, how does this work? because we <laughs> we're not allowed to discuss student so obviously you see there's yeah. only ID numbers yeah there, absolutely um, because we're not allowed to discuss in public a student's IEP or um, 504 certainly and we're not allowed to identify those students we actually don't even know the recommendations we're going on what the administrators and Dr. Benante mm -hmm. feel are appropriate for these students. What yeah. element, though, are you curious about? Well, it's it's that, that? I, I totally get the. There's no conversation about students, right? But it's interesting that we're approving things that I have no idea what the content is. <laughs> well, um, I think in the I, back not of, that I don't trust right, you. Right, you'll, it you'll just, see it student identified ID. numbers, but it doesn't. It doesn't say services. what the. It's literally right. just this is the recommendation. Is it so? Is it, a, how, is it a requirement of law that the board approves yes. these? Okay, fine. Great. Yes. Good. That's yeah, fine. Because there's expenditures attached to them. If sure. there's more information, you know, looking at, I, I've seen our recommendations, obviously, and I'm sorry, I don't have the backup right no, in front no, of me no, with no, my hard good. copy. So i um, sorry to peer yeah, over no, your shoulder no. as I'm <laughs> looking at the backup to see how it's formatted. But I, I think that there, if there is additional information that the board would want, as long as it's not identifying information about the student, if yeah. it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, program. Uh, so uh, if a student has an approved 504 plan um, or is receiving some sort of services through CSE or CPSE uh, related services such as speech and language or sp special education services by yeah. a special educator, if there are questions regarding that level of detail, just to more familiarize yourself with it, we can, we can coordinate yeah. the backup in a, in a different way. 
There have been times, too, that Anne has made a note if one of the expenditures for a new item, you know, a new st a student issue is something significant, you know, like, you uh, know, this is going to cost us $50,000 more or within something. Within the recommendations? We, yeah, she'll within make a note. Part, okay. uh, not in this. Usually it's somewhere in executive content okay. um, if it's something really remarkable. Okay. Um, right. yeah. You can look for that. So, uh, Oftentimes, I, these are pre schoolers um, as you see yes. them come up through the school year yeah. who are eligible for something like a speech and language support yeah, yeah sure. because they went through an evaluation, went through an evaluation and, and we yeah. have a service provider who's already designated for providing that level of support more often than not that's what totally makes going sense. on totally makes yeah. sense it was just an interesting yeah. structure of approval yes. in which you have no insight into what you're yeah. approving but you're required to approve it anyway sure. and certainly we sure. trust you and people making yeah. recommendations yeah. well but and there's a whole process they have to go before the committee on special ed right. yes absolutely so it, before it reaches this point there's yeah. a lot of um evaluating oh, going on absolutely so we have to trust that the work of uh special ed directors committee on special ed yeah dr Benante, um People personnel services right, yeah. all come together and recognize this is yeah. what's needed. For and as a part of the budget student. development process, there should also be uh, a report provided on special education specifically yeah. that will drill, drill down into um, the cost of services for um, uh, preschool students, for in district students, for out of district students. Right, right, right. Um, so there is a, a there is a, there does come a point um, routinely where we will drill down into what our spending looks like um, in special education as part of budget development. And that's certainly, and the other one would be, that would be interesting, and this is when you have a new director in place, mm -hmm. it's like, how is this changing over time? What's, right. what's happening to the be, availability yes. and yeah. utilization of services and right. all that sort of stuff? It's, right. it's very interesting. In fairness to our new director, because uh, <laughs> they're likely going to be coming in right as we're starting budget development. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> I want to. I don't want to overcommit them. Yeah. You know, to a specific profile of report, but it, it that's going to have to be a focus right away. But some of that takes a lot of time yeah. to get the historical perspective put yep. together. Um, so we'll see what we can do. Although Selena uh, Fisher and Bonnie Hart, our interims, have have our, have done some work on that already okay. to help guide the process moving along. Great. Thank you. Sorry to. No. Good question. Because that's that was actually. An exact question that I had initially <laughs> like, as well. What am, I, when, what am I saying yes to? <laughs> right. um, so, no Did further discussion. Approve? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any communication from the public? I just wanted to make a note. Uh, Dr. Bonante mentioned it. Um, uh, the Haldane School Foundation had an event Saturday night. Uh, John and I were there. Dr. Benante was there. Uh, Andre McHugh was there. Um, they threw a great party. They always do. Um, a big thank you to them for their their work on behalf of our students, and a thank you to all of the community members, teachers, parents who were there uh, donating money. And I don't know how much they raised. Sometimes I have the number by now. Twenty. Twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand. Um, and I know that they had an, some earmarked initiatives, but it's it's uh, impressive, um, impressive work that they do. So a, a thank you to them and a thank you to I everyone heard who gave contributes. a good uh, spiel for uh, he did. sound. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I heard about that too. <laughs> he, yeah, he was very Noah compelling. <laughs> We're gonna have Noah go out and promote the budget this year. <laughs> <laughs> such a great job! I told him he earned himself another job. <laughs> yeah. we'll make a video about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, great yeah. work! Yes, absolutely. We're very grateful for the Healthy and School Foundation. Okay, if there's no additional communication from the public, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Short. I gotta to the polls you go if you have not voted. <laughs>